Hi guys and welcome back to video number 104 of Small Engines Questions and Answers. So hopefully everybody's enjoying their summer. The weather's been great here. It's been pretty hot, but not as hot as it's been in some of the states in the US. But in some areas of Canada here, there's been a lot of flooding as well. But here in Ontario, it's really dry, so it's kind of one extreme to the other. And again, I want to welcome all my new subscribers before I get into this episode. In my first question today, YouTuber emailed me the other day saying he replaced the rope in his generator, but now the rope doesn't go all the way back into the recoil, so he's wondering what could be causing that. Well, here's a generator with the same problem, and what could be causing that is that the spring inside needs to be tightened up. What you need to do for this is take off the recoil and turn the rope on the inside counterclockwise, and what this will do is tighten up the rope so that it comes back in all the way. You can watch some of my chainsaw recoil repair videos or my generator pull cord repair video to see how it's done. It's fairly simple, anybody can do. You would have to take off the bolts holding it on and then put it back. And you may have to do more than one revolution on the inside depending on how far the rope is sticking out. So on this generator here, one turn would do. If it was sticking out this far or more, you may have to wind the spring two turns. And one more tip, when you see a rope is getting bad like this, it should be replaced. In my next question, a YouTuber asked me what can happen if my carburetor doesn't have a good seal between the bowl and the carburetor body itself. Well, what can happen is your carburetor can leak fuel, it can suck in air when it's running, and if it does run, it's not going to run properly. Now what I'm talking about today are carburetors with a float like this. Now this is the seal I'm talking about today. It's the one between the carburetor body and the bowl. And here's the bowl of this carburetor. So when you put it back on, if that seal isn't good, the fuel is going to leak out. And as I mentioned earlier, you're going to have other symptoms. Now when you take a Tecumseh carburetor like this, it's a different seal. It's on the side of the body here like this. There's kind of like a lip or ridge on the carb and this o-ring here comes right off just like this as you can see and you also want to make sure it's nice and clean on the carburetor body itself this corrosion here must be cleaned off or else you may not have a nice tight seal and if the seal isn't good then you may need to replace this o-ring here as well on Tecumseh carburetors I often replace these o-rings so if you do a carb rebuild you're going to get this o-ring in the kit and on Tecumseh carburetors like this, if you see that the O-ring is expanded or stretched, just replace it. Even if the O-ring of rubber still looks good, but it's expanded or stretched, it's not going to make a good seal. So the bottom line is always make sure you have a good seal between the carburetor body and the bowl. My next question today is, why is my Quantum lawnmower engine burning oil? Well, I'm just going to show you part of a Quantum engine here and I'll give you a few reasons why it may burn oil. So a quantum engine would look similar to this engine here. It's a Briggs & Stratton engine. It will not look like this Briggs & Stratton 3.5 classic engine. So here's the quantum engine I have here. I stripped it because it's not good anymore. And what I wanted to show you is that there's a little valve seal right down in here on the intake valve. And here's the seal right down here where my pick is. There's the spring and you can see the rubber. So if this seal here is worn out or it's overheated and it's really loose on the valve, it could cause oil to get in there and get burnt up in your engine. So even if you saw that the spring was off, then that's a sign that the seal needs to be replaced. It's not an expensive part. You would have to remove the intake valve to replace it, but it can be a quick and easy and inexpensive fix if your engine is burning excessive amounts of oil. So you'd have to remove this cover here, take the spring off and the small cap to get the valve off. Then you could reach inside and replace that seal and the spring. The spring does come with the seal when you buy a new one. And if you look down the exhaust valve port over here, which is where the muffler attaches to, you will not see a seal and a spring there. So don't worry about the exhaust valve. Now if you replace this seal and your engine is still burning a lot of oil, it could be that you need a new set of rings in there. Also sometimes the valve guides get worn out and a bit of oil passes through. And another reason that may be burning oil is if your cylinder is scratched or scored like this one. So obviously something happened here because it shouldn't be scratched like this. It should be nice and smooth. This engine here did not run properly 
and when I took it apart to get some parts that I wanted to keep off of it I realized that it was scratched in there. The compression didn't feel too bad when you started it but obviously there was a problem. And another tip which is basically common sense is make sure you do not overfill your engine with oil because it could cause it to burn excessive amounts of oil. Another question I got is a YouTuber asked me if it's necessary to always run your outboard in water when you give it a test run. Well the answer to that is yes you should always run it into a drum of water or some kind of test tank or even better if you live near a lake or a river then test it in there. If you don't test it in water what's going to happen is your motor is going to overheat and possibly burn out. And another thing too is you may end up damaging the impeller which is located in the lower unit of your engine. The impeller here on this one needs to be replaced. You can see it's all curled up. It doesn't touch the edges properly. And if you started your engine and it was dry and not in water, you could end up damaging the impeller as well. And then when you put it in water, it's not going to pump the water up to the engine to cool it. So those are the two main reasons why you should always test your outboard motor in some kind of test tank. If you don't have access to a river or a lake, you can always set up a 45 gallon drum like this. Fill it up with water and test your engines in there. In my next question today, a YouTuber has a lawn tractor and he says when he turns the key to shut it off, it still keeps running. He's wondering what could be causing that. Well, the first thing that could be causing that is a bad wire or connection somewhere in the electrical system of your lawn tractor. So you'd want to check the whole wiring system of your lawn tractor. It can be a tedious job and I know nobody likes to do that. The other thing that could be causing it is a bad ignition switch. First what I would do though is check the whole electrical system to make sure it's in good condition before replacing the switch. If you do have a spare switch kick and run you can try it and if it still does the same thing then you know it's an electrical issue in the tractor. Sometimes what happens is the positive wire gets disconnected from the coil or coils under the cowling and even if you turn the key off it's still going to keep running. So you may want to take the cover off here, look at the ignition modules to make sure that the little wire is connected to them. And today I'm also going to share a tip with you guys. Sometimes I get asked why isn't the propane heating the metal parts I need to take apart quickly enough. Well that's because propane doesn't heat up stuff as hot as let's say map gas or an acetylene torch. The BTUs are not that high on propane fuel. If you're a homeowner and you can't afford to buy acetylene torches then the next best thing I would say is to get the map gas. You can also buy a small kit. It's map gas and oxygen I believe. It's not going to be as hot as an oxyacetylene torch but it's sure going to get you out of some jams. Now one last tip I want to give you guys for today is regarding these little stand-up scooters like this. They're made in China and somebody was asking me if the choke is on when it's up or it's down. Well the choke is on when this little red lever is up and the choke is off when it's down. You want to make sure it's up for a while when you start it up so it warms up. When it warms up bring it back down. Another thing I want to tell you in regards to these little scooters is if you get carburetor problems don't bother taking it to a shop, just buy a new carburetor. You can buy a whole new carburetor for this for under $30, which is not much more than actually buying a full repair kit for it. So just get a whole new carburetor, you can find them on eBay, do a swap, and that should fix your problem. And I do have a few videos of carburetor repair work on these little scooters. You can go to my channel and type in stand up scooter carburetor repair. Those keywords should take you to my videos. So this will wrap it up for this week's q and I want to thank you guys for taking the time to come by and watch this episode today. Have yourselves a great weekend and we'll see you in two weeks.